we'll start with you, Kristen, and we'll do Rufus questions first, and then we'll go to questions for Tom and Bruce. Um, um, yeah, so the question from Carly is, will, will the functionalities be similar to MMP, which is currently used to create nutrient management plans for producers? And um, I had not heard of the MMP tool before, but I did um, look through their website a bit. Um, and so one of the potential future applications of the Rufus model has been um uh, speculated to be to support nutrient management plans. Um, however, um, at least from my my small amount of interactions with my colleague Kareen Ketterings, who um, works on defining the processes for the uh, required for nutrient management plans and and trains people to 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 do those in New York State. I know that there is a, a lot of review and and work that needs to be done to um, for anything any tools like these to actually be used for those purposes. So I'd say um, we would need to go through a pretty rigorous review before uh, Rufus could be used for something like that. Um, and then I did look at the technical documentation, like the underlying models behind the um, MMP model. And uh, I think you know, similar to a lot of, of tools that are in application and, and, you know, providing useful insight out there it is it is um not as detailed as the rufus model um, we have uh, taken this this very process based approach and and representing things on a daily basis and um at least from what i can say i don't think that that's the approach that the mmp model has taken and so i think that um you know if if we were successful in um being able to uh, move in the in the direction of nutrient management plans. Uh, I, we would just need to make sure that our um, process based methods were interpreted in, in ways that were in alignment with these more empirical estimates. Okay, thank you, Kristen. It mm -hmm. looks like there was one more question asked towards the beginning of your presentation as well um, from Victor. So. Do you have a preference in long-term storage of nitrate versus ammonium? I am not 100% sure how to answer that. And I don't know if Victor can add any more context to it. Um, but if not, I, I will definitely share that with, um, with Pharma and Greg and see if they have any insight and um, perhaps could um, share that back with you. Um, I guess... Yeah. Long term storage of nitrate versus ammonia. Ammonium. Yeah, I don't I'm I don't I'm not sure what that what the gist of that question is. Okay, well we'll we'll maybe say follow up, but Victor, if you're mm -hmm. you're still here and can provide a little bit more context if we have time, um we'll so circle back to that question. Um, the rest of the questions so far look like they're for Bruce and Tom. So Kristen, if any come through and we have time, I'll, I'll bring them back to you. But first question for Tom and Bruce, um, again, from Victor, can we convert cubic feet to metric? I'm assuming that's what the CF is. Yeah. In cool. Yeah. Yeah, it could be done. Okay. Um, do you want to provide any more context on, on how, or. You get your calculator out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Good answer. When in doubt. No, yeah. I think I I think I'm not the programmer, so I don't know how easy it is to do to make the terms uh interchangeable in, in there, but it, it it could could it could be done, I'm sure. If if you have money, we can do it. Yeah. Good answer. Um, for the whole NMPT program is is dollars. Uh, the program was created with uh, basically dollars donated, and to date, it's free to use. Tom and I provide provide the training to anybody that wants to get trained on how to use it. So uh, uh, from there, we're just we're always looking for uh, people that may want to add something to it, and we're open to that. But we need dollars to do those kinds of things. 
And basically, the dollars don't go to us. They go to our program. They're expensive. Yeah, he's he's expensive, dude. <laughs> and that, that kind of segues into this anonymous attendee question about, is this goal to create a national level or keep it? Or right now, it's very organ-specific. But the things that would need to be changed in it would be the the weather, the soils, and the uh, phosphorus index data, the background data that that's in there, and uh, so that's if somebody was interested for another state, that that's the things that would have to be changed. It's all freeware, so right. it, it, it's available. What our programmer would do is he put together a little package if anybody wanted to look at it, and it would be just the database information, basically a clean database because it wouldn't include any uh, uh, cooperator information. It would just be uh, the numbers that we use, and uh, he could provide that to folks, and they could take a look at it and see if they want to use it or not. And go from there because probably the phosphorus index is going to be different from state to state, so you'd have to modify that. Yeah, and like the other numbers as well, the climatic data and all that. Right. Um. Okay. Next question. Um. Sorry for this person. If I butcher your name, is it Kier or Kier? Uh. Asks. Does the NMP tool give producers an easier path to providing records for Oregon inspectors in a way that helps reduce paperwork burden? Um, and how widely has it been adopted, this tool? Personally, from the inspectors I spoke to, they they, they like it because everything's laid out. Because a lot of people before would have a little shirt pocket book they'd pull out and there was thumb through it and there'd be the application date and all that so it puts everything in one place that they can easily see and in some cases for some smaller uh, farms they've helped people step through it to create it and and that was our goal all along is to make this a a, a, a producer usable tool so they may have some help setting it up but then they would be able to make the changes as they add or subtract land cows animals whatever and um make it easier and cheaper for them to do as well. And so uh, paperwork-wise, it still spits out an enormous amount of paper, you know, for the plan. And we have how many people are using it now? A couple hundred people use it from cattle and dairy, a lot of dairy, swine, chickens. So it's pretty well used in the state. It gets more, most People don't don't like to do paperwork or type on the computer. So uh, the one thing about on the applications, you can actually use your cell phone yeah. to make applications. You you want to try and do everything, but it's not advised. <laughs> but just on applications, if you're out in and you want to say, Oh, I got the big gun running or I'm putting on so many loads with my spreader, you can put it in right there on site with your cell phone. So it's uh, it's super good to be used that way for record keeping. If anybody wants to go on there, you, you can go onto the website and cre create a, it'd be Oregon specific again, but but you could go on there and play around with it and see what it does and how it's used and things, so. Um, okay, uh, one more. So there's one more question for Tom and Bruce that's come up and it came through the chat. We provided the link. In addition, Heather Pat wants to know if there's a user guide for the tool, uh, whether general video PowerPoint, you know, on why a farm operator would want to use this and then how to kind of maybe navigate using it if they're first timers. There's uh, there's really no. I started to create a uh, what you call it, a manual for the program, but we were changing it so much back then. I just I lost track. So the manual really is not very good. But in the program itself, uh, the Oregon State University folks, extension folks, volunteered to create some little help menus and uh, videos. And in there, if you look on the NMPT program site, you'll see little question marks. And that pops up a little video or it pops up a, a little information that you can use uh, when you're creating your your uh, your 
livestock operation. So, uh, uh, yeah, there there's no real help manual for it at this point. Yeah, those it's the little question mark things at the top of the uh, the column. It'll explain what I know what uh, needs to be inputted. So that's all we have for now. Okay. Um, thank you, Bruce. And then another question came through kind of um, in the shareability of the tool. So does the nutrient management planning tool, whoever is creating the initial plan or the initial interaction with the tool, do those folks have the ability to invite others to view edit the data on their account? For example, a consultant or a TSP. Yeah. And that's, so the the whole critter is housed at the Oregon Dairy Farmers Association, and the state doesn't have any input to it. So the only way you can get into it is if you have the username and password. And for a lot of people I work with, that's what they'll do. They'll give me their username and password, and I'll go in and add stuff for them and things like that. So whoever you want to share it with. And there's no monetary information anything like that and it's so it's other facility you know so there's not a lot of very very private information in there and it's very well encrypted um, supposedly hard to break into but famous last words right so let's see yes um anonymous attendee asks in oregon are all dairies required to submit manure management records or is this voluntary yeah so so if you have if you can find animals, it's very strict interpretation of the EPA rules. So if you can find animals and or have a li liquid storage facilities, you have to have a, a nutrient management plan. And lately they've been moving down in the number of animals uh, to where they're looking at people with a couple cows or a few pigs or something. So they're going to figure out how to make that not a big burden on these people because typically they don't want to do for the state too much you know so but yes it is required okay great thank you for the clarification on that um any other questions that folks have we've used the mmp tool mineral management planner quite a bit in the past and uh the, it's got a few shortcomings especially in the the northwest up here is that it doesn't tra track uh, weather very good, weather variations. It's more of a, a straight line, linear uh, deal on weather. Like every month, your precipitation doesn't vary a whole bunch. So when it computes storage time, it's a linear thing. And uh, for us out here in the West, that does not work because we get a lot of precipitation in uh, this time of the year through March, April. And then it dries up, and so we have very little precipitation from that point on. So it's uh, that was one of the shortcomings we found in it. It also does not work well with pasture systems. It's kind of a pain in the neck to try and put a pasture system into MMP because it uh, doesn't do well uh, trying to you're trying to note uh, the volume of manure that animals put on the on a field, say, for example, example, and uh, I know the people at Purdue that put the program together, they were looking at mainly using uh, uh, the uh, fertilizer guide information, and it just, it, it doesn't work too well doing that, and so that's another reason we came up with a different tool out here to use, because we really struggled. Uh, we We've probably done, I don't know, 50 CNMPs with the MMP program out here. And uh, people look at them and they go, what are trying to do? <laughs> it's, it's hard to put the data in there so it looks reasonable on what you were trying to accomplish. And uh, so uh, that's just a comment on the MMP program. But it's a good tool if you use it in a situation like uh, uh, Midwest for a confined operation that's under roof mainly works great for something like that.